So uh, my name is Carrie Jones. Uh, I'm the archaeologist uh, for the Presidio Trust at the Presidio of San Francisco. Uh, my colleague, uh, Monse Osterley, is also here. He's another archaeologist in the department. Um, we're actually giving a presentation for Jules McKnight, who's our outreach specialist and couldn't be here today. So I'll try to do it justice. Um, and we titled our presentation Prioritizing the Public, um, because that's actually really something that we want to do at the Presidio. We're not just doing public engagement as a side effect of doing archaeology, we really prioritize this uh, public aspect of our work. Um, because we work in a national park, um, we work at the Presidio of San Francisco, a National Historic Landmark District, nestled at the foot of the Golden Gate Bridge, at the tip of the city of San Francisco. We are urban archaeologists, uh, trying to capture the imagination of urban people. Um, it can be difficult, and I'm sort of pointing out some of the challenges we face here. And then uh, for tips and tricks, you can ask us questions when we're finished. Um, so El Presidio is the founding settlement of what would later become the city of San Francisco. It was first established by Spain in 1776 as a fortified village. Uh, we are fortunate that a piece of that colonial site survives in two adobe rooms in our officers club today. Uh, the remaining site is well preserved under a parking lot in an open space in front of the officers club, uh, which we've just opened as a major new multifaceted cultural destination in the city of San Francisco. So please come visit us. Um, Research on this site has been opportunistic since its discovery in 1994, but in 2014, the Presidio Archaeology Lab launched a long-term research excavation at the site. We excavate, excavate from May through September, Thursday through Friday, and we maintain a completely open site. Um, that means we use multiple techniques to encourage passerbys to stumble upon archaeologists in action. We do receive purposeful visitors, but most of the people that come are actually quite surprised and delighted that there are archaeologists in their midst, that there's archaeology in San Francisco. Um, while we do um, really enjoy all these visitors, we've received over 2,000 visitors to the site um, in the 2014 season, and that was before we opened the Officers Club in October 2014. Um, so we expect even more visitors in the coming years, uh, which means it's very difficult to get our work done. Um, so in order to solve that challenge, we actually uh, train a uh, number of docents, um, and you can see them here. Christine and Lisa are there, and they actually are the first contact uh, with the public, and they answer their very basic questions, and then they have a technical question that only archaeologists can answer. They're, of course, welcome to come to the trench and ask us those questions. Uh, and it also uh, has a double benefit of allowing some of our more dedicated volunteers to get a little more deeply involved in the project. Speaking of volunteers, um, we maintain an active volunteer program on the site. So every, every day we're on the site, uh, we have volunteers on the site with us. Uh, they do our non-technical tasks, uh, the screening, the washing, the sorting. Um, the problem with this is that we have a volunteer wait list of over 400 people. Uh, we were able to serve, or they were able to help serve us, uh, 100 people this year, um, which means that we've got 300 people didn't actually get to actively participate uh, in our project. Uh, and that's a real challenge, because if you're an archaeologist, you can only dig so much dirt, you can only produce so much dirt to screen and so many artifacts to wash. Uh, we also um, have a lot of recovering archaeologists, or archaeologists who don't have jobs, um, that want to come and volunteer with us, that we want to give a sort of a deeper and more in-depth experience. And we haven't yet quite figured out a way um, to serve them and in the next, in the coming years, we're actually going to open it up to them to give us some ideas about ways that they think that they could volunteer in a more meaningful way. It's not just screening. The screening isn't important because mm -hmm. it is. Um, and lastly, um, as part of our program, uh, we run archaeology youth programs. Uh, we have two uh, curriculum-based, tied to California standards, uh, archaeological field trips that we run. Thing with Jake and College, which is for second and third graders and Excavate History, which is uh, for fourth graders. Um, we served over 1,400 students <coughs> last year. All of our programs are free, um, which makes them very popular. And we do not have the capacity to serve all the students that we want to serve. Um, our Excavate History program uh, filled up within a week this year, uh, which means that there's a lot of repeat visitors and we don't get to serve, especially the underserved audiences in San Francisco, uh, the way that we would like to. In order to address this, um, we've actually, um, as part of the Officers Club, there are two new dedicated classrooms. 
Uh, and we also just hired three full-time education interns. So we've expanded from one day a week of field trips to four days this year. But we'll still only be able to serve about 3,000 uh, students in the program. Um, so these are all challenges um, that I wanted to present to you. Uh, and maybe as we um, talk later in the session, uh, you can help us figure it out. Thank you. Thank you.